Now, what young people aged 16, 17, and 18 are doing is they're scanning sideways. They're looking to their peer group. Um, what makes you popular, what makes you accepted, uh, what makes you new, what makes you modern is what's going on in their minds. And of course, it's all ephemeral stuff. It's stuff that changes. We all remember being 16, 17 year old, and we remember the clothes we wore, and we're trying to bury those photographs all the time. Fortunately, Facebook didn't exist, um, so I'm safe at the moment. But uh, young people are constantly thinking about what makes you trendy, what makes you popular. And um, of course, what makes you popular uh, is actually really rather uninteresting to those of us who are older, and yet it is the thing which obsesses them. So how do you make that shift in young people in their minds from the uh, lip-curling indifference of being 16 or 17, listening to adults, um, to making them realize that what makes you popular with your friends does not make you employable? In fact, it probably runs counter to making you employable. There's no appeals process over jobs. There's no automatic right to have a job, unlike going to a school or indeed getting to university. Um, and that sense of um, indifference to what's going on is really difficult to counter. On the other hand, of course, you don't want to browbeat young people into making them into adults too early. Um, some of their scepticism about what adults have to say is really good. Um, you know, sorting out what fake news is, what's bad advice, is a really good thing. Actually, I want questioning, lively, um, uh, argumentative, combative young people in my school. I want them to be dealing with ideas. But I do also need a shift to make sure that everything I'm doing isn't actually making them unemployable. I don't want to be sending them out into the world in such a way that they end up being so uh, rebarbative, so bloody-minded, so independent that they will never do what they're told. So what you need to do as a young person is be able to think beyond your generation. You need to think, how do I appeal to an older generation? You know, these old fogies like me. How do I impress them rather than just my peer group? Um, I probably find young people's uh, culture actually really rather alarming. I don't really understand it. I need them to come closer to me and to understand me. And one of the key things about that is making sure that there are, quite simply, different voices. Different voices which are talking to young people. So one of the ways that we do that in, uh, in our school, and I think across independent schools and um, in other schools as well, is to make sure that there is a program of introducing young people from really quite a young age to other people doing things that are nothing to do with teaching. Um, that can start really quite young. Um, but let's look at it at the, um, the other end. Um, and we find that mentoring is a really key thing. So finding uh, adults who have got jobs, it doesn't matter particularly what their job is, but they are particularly useful if they are involved in some aspect of recruiting. And they nearly always say, well, show me your CV. And the young people say, well, my CV is going to be the same as everyone else's, surely. I'm doing GCSEs, I'm doing the same GCSEs as everyone else, and I do some extracurricular activities. And what you can do is you can unpick and say, yeah, okay, it might have the same elements in it. But actually, the way you describe it, the way you talk about it, the way you've used your discretionary time, the choices you've made along your life, actually is beginning to be interesting. And it's a very different relationship that those young people are, are, are dealing with. Because they realize that these, teach these are not teachers, these are, young these are adults who have a conditional relationship which they can walk away from. So they tend also not to hold their punches. And they say, you're late. Why are you late? If you're late in my business, this was what would happen. And the young people begin to see that some of these things aren't actually always negotiable. Some things have repercussions. The other thing we're trying to do is try to get people to interview them. It's fascinating interviewing young people because I don't know if you've ever sat watching yourself being interviewed or you've done an online interview. That's what happens, people are interviewing. And you suddenly realize your whole world opens up and the way you're being seen, that sort of lip curling indifference suddenly becomes rudeness. Uh, that hostility that you thought was just trendiness is becoming different. Or indeed, the way you listen is becoming something which is a positive. The way that you're nodding is becoming something that's positive. So actually opening them to, re to, to realize that the, v the views of other adults is going to be fascinating. And my final point, I think, just to explain this, is um, some people see there's being a disconnect between being an academic or an intellectual or an ac academically minded school and actually then thinking about employability. I disagree with that. I think that if children are doing things that they really love and they're interested in, then they will actually develop those qualities that will make them employable. And I was very struck that Baroness Wolfe, who came to speak at the school recently, um, the great author of um, uh, the government report on vocational education, she said, if I've got one piece of advice to give you all, is please choose things you want to do. Choose things you really love doing. And if that means going to university, choose something you want to do there. Because if you do something you love doing, you will actually acquire those things that will make you employable. That you will grow as a full person. And I'd like to just think that when we're walking around and looking at a child and thinking about all the different intelligences, we're very keen to be making sure that we've got all the methods to grow those intelligences. And different intelligences 
grow in different ways. At which point I think I shall now hand over to Mike, who's I hope going to disagree with me violently um, and cause a wonderful debate. Um, I'm a tax director at PwC and I've got nothing to do with education. I'm here because someone wanted asked me to talk about the experience of the students I see coming through an organisation uh, such as a profession such as PwC. So, what is it like coming into an organisation? And I'm going to talk about PwC because that's where I've got the most experience, but it applies to all the professions in some way. It's a very complicated process now to go through the process of actually being recruited into an organisation. You have to go through psychosymmetric testing, online testing, qualification reviews and everything before you even get in. Now, there are statistics I've put into my slides which will be useful for you to actually look at online, but they actually show how, what it's like, how difficult it is now for a student to go into a profession. So I'm going to actually walk you through a couple of the slides and take you through. So the process, it's complex. You need people with good consultative uh, skills. But what we need is more is learning agility, not ability, agility. It's the qualification to take the information beyond the education you do. We don't care what course you've done. I, I do interviewing some of the graduates and I'll look at some of the people coming through. I don't care if they've done accounting or maths or something of like that. What I'm looking for is this person going to be someone I will put in front of a client and work with me going forward. What skills have they learned through school? What have they actually achieved through that process? I put the CV aside. I'm not going to test that. That's not where I'm doing in an interview anymore. So when the graduate's coming through, I'm looking for who's going to be the future guardian of the firm, who's going to take the skill set forward. And it's quite interesting. It's not the cleverest person who is always recruited. It's you need them to get through the exams. You need them to get through all of the other ability side of things. But what you're looking for is that personality, which I can't train that. I can train skills and knowledge, but not personality. The nature of courses, I said, doesn't matter, but looking at some of the, uh, the intern relationships, let, we'll start off with the first el uh, element of how we take people in. Interns are, have got a sort of a bad name a little bit because of them paid or unpaid. PwC takes, and all of the big four, are very much involved in interns. They're all paid. We actually, this year, we've actually got a large number of interns, and the statistics, you can't get, show them on the graph, but we were the largest intern taker for 2017, based upon the accountancy survey. All the other big four are the same, and interns enable us to have jobs. If you look at EY, so they said after 90% of the interns they took on board, 80% of them took a job or were offered a job, and then took it. So it is an important process, but it is very early stage, it's from the second year. Internal relationships last for about six weeks. It's a process that people have to consider from, an, from early on as to whether they're going to go and put themselves through it after the second year. As well as that, we then move on to, we have um, other um, skill sets which we'll look at. We, gra we take graduates and we also take A-level students. The graduate uh, take on board, applications, just to pull it in perspective, just with PwC, we had 48,000 applications and took 2,187 jobs with the largest um, graduate recruitment. It shows you the number of applications now and what you have to go through to get a job these days and what you need to go to even have to get to the process of interviews. We are diversity. Um, we, again, you look at the statistics, we're 44% female now in our applications and graduates, 33% black, Asian and minority ethnic. We, are, we also now have, for the first to, for a number of years, we've been one of the, uh, PwC has been one of the forefront of taking A-level students. These are people who don't want to go to university, who have decided for other reasons university is not right. They leave the independent schools and then, or other schools and come through to PwC. We took 144 in 2016. Turning on to my experience, and just uh, she put it in, um, as I said, I work with clients which come from everywhere, uh, every different region. I'm a specialist in emerging market. Unfortunately, it's tax, and I've heard that there's so many pages, I can tell you I haven't read all of them. I might have uh, some time ago, but not these days. What we're looking for now is for people who can adapt, agile, people with skills which, when they come in, they could actually work with clients. They're the ones we're going to train. They're the ones you're going to actually take forward. So your education is a, s a stepping stone. The rest of the skill sets are the ones you will learn 
through other things you do, some of the skills, tutoring, mentoring, and all the other areas. You need to look at that, the future needs of some of these, that uh, we've got changing demands. My, the graduates, since I started working 30 years ago, to what I saw 10, 20 years ago, it's all different. Now I'm seeing much more of the millennial, millennial uh, students coming through. They're de more demanding. They ask more questions. I quite like people being a bit maverick. I was always labelled a maverick within PwC. I want someone to think differently. I want them to think out of the box and be something a more agile in the way of the approach. Because to survive in this world, we're going to have to be something better than what we were yesterday. You're also going to see automation is going to change everything. You're going to see how everything is changing. They may love all of the issues about dealing with social media, or computer work, whatever it is, but you're going to actually see there, this is going to change everything. So PwC and all the big professions are looking into intelligence, how to actually use machines to do the jobs of some of the people we've now got. You know, most, quite a lot of the people who come into PwC are actually coming into 52% this year have gone into something which has got um, sort of computer generated activity behind it. They're actually part of some of our courses, either in tax, into HR, whatever, which is involved in online or whatever. But we're actually going to see automation change everything over the next five to ten years. So from my perspective, I'm I'm looking for the next generation of students to come through. I want them to be they think differently. I want them to be a bit more maverick, not all the time, but to, to actually be something different. And they have to be able to adapt. And that, I think, is going to be the challenge which I think the schools are going to have to actually help with um, sort of organisations like us to change. And that's me.